Well guys, guess what showed up last week? This is the Intel Nutman Extreme and I didn't really expect it to have one sitting here right now. That's because after our coverage at CES 2020, it just sort of faded away. Honestly, I really hoped Vintel went back to the drawing board since what we saw earlier this year didn't really inspire much confidence at all. Now, the NUC9, or what's codenamed Ghost Canyon, is really, really expensive, guys. Uh, it really is. But it does come in one of the smallest packages I've ever seen. I mean, it's a shot next to my face if that that makes sense. Now there's a saying that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover and I think it's important to approach every review with an open mind because Intel did manage to pack some impressive specs on the NUC9. So let's break it down and see what it can actually perform and what it offers after this. Take your gaming experience to the elite level with ViewSonic's XG27 series. Bridging the gap between gamers and people who appreciate color accuracy, the XG27 QG offers stunning visuals with 165Hz 1440p Nano IPS panel and a G-Sync module. Meanwhile, the XG270 comes with a blazing fast 1080p 240Hz display, along with the Pure XB Blur Reduction certified by Blurbusters, resulting in crystal clear visuals in fast moving objects, making it the ultimate gaming monitor. Both also come with RGB ambient lighting and a flexible headphone stand. Learn more down below. Okay, so let's start this off by explaining what the NUC9 is. First of all, the NUC9 series will be broken down into two major categories. So there's the NUC9 Extreme, uh, which will come with the i9, i7, and i5 CPUs, and the NUC9 Pro, which will be equipped with Xeon and vPro processors. Right now, the NUC9 ecosystem consists of two components. The first is this. It's called the compute element. And in many ways, it's a self-contained PC that's just missing a power supply and a case. It holds an integrated 9th gen processor. Yeah, that's right, I just said 9th gen. Even though the 10th gen is available right now. Yeah. It's also got a cooling assembly, a motherboard with all the usual I.O. connectors, memory slots, a Wi-Fi 6 module, and space for two M.2 SSDs. Now you'll notice that the compute element has a PCI connector, and that's meant to interface with a baseboard like this one. While they'll come in different sizes, the daughter card in our NUC can be used to add expansion cards like a GPU or a secondary PCI-based storage drive. Others simply act as a power interface and help create ultra compact systems like the Stack Solo. Right now, the NUC9 compute element will be sold to system integrators to create small form factor PCs or bare bones kits like the Razer Tomahawk that we checked out recently at CES this year uh, and the iBab Power Revolt. But according to Intel, there are already plans to roll out new compute elements through 2022. So those can just be bought as drop in upgrades. So supposedly, this wouldn't be a dead-end purchase, I hope. Anyways, the first rollout of the NUC9 will be into Intel's extreme kits like this one. This is a bare bones kit that comes with a five liter small form factor case, uh, a 500 watt 80 plus platinum power supply, uh, a baseboard that comes with two PCI expansion slots. Now, you will need to buy your own soda memory storage, and if you want to game, uh, you definitely have to end up getting a dedicated graphics card. And the price for all of this, it's, it's not cheap, guys, it's expensive. So the i5-9300H base system is gonna run you around 950 US dollars. The i7-9750H is gonna be around $1,110. And the i9-9980HK, which is the eight core 16 thread base system is gonna cost you 1550. I also need to mention that these are Intel provided prices and it looks like a few of them are already popping up. And for the time being, the i9-9980HK will set you back a little less than 1700 US dollars. You see, before moving on, I do need to mention something very important. If you look at the NUC9, specifically the 9980HK system, and if you spec it out with storage, memory, graphics card, monitor, and operating system, it's gonna cost as much as a gaming laptop or even more than that. And if you move into the desktop category, you can get an insane amount of horsepower for that price. Not to mention, it is a questionable choice by Intel to include a 9th gen CPU because they're already rolling out 10th gen Comet Lake processors into notebooks uh, recently. And yeah, it's, 
like, what are they doing? Instead of calling this next unit of computing, they really should have called it last gen unit of computing because the specs are outdated, quite frankly. Anyways, I do have to give Intel some major credit since the NUC9 Extreme looks awesome with a honeycomb metal mesh for increased airflow and a really tiny footprint. It's also really well equipped for professionals with two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports and a UHS-2 card reader up front. There are tons of additional ports at the back from that compute element itself. So that includes two LAN jacks, two Thunderbolt ports, and four USB 3.2 Gen 2s. Now to get inside, you just have to loosen the two screws and then pull out the top panel. And I have to say, thanks Intel for including captured screws. I wish more cases had these. That top panel has two 80 millimeter exhaust fans that have power provided through a contact plate installed onto the front panel. The next step is to slide off a side panel and that's it. You now have access to the compute element or the PCI slots. Getting to the element only needs two screws, which has to be loosened and the entire front piece just lifts off out of the way. Here, there are two M.2 slots and two SODIMM slots that can handle up to 32 gigabytes of memory at 2666 megahertz and higher, or it can take a 64 gigabyte kit uh, at 2400 megahertz. It's a bit tight, but installing those components is pretty easy. After that, it's just a matter of closing things up. And for me, installing a GPU. And this is where I have to jump in again, because in order to keep the form factor as small as possible, Intel is limiting GPU height to two slots and the length itself to eight inches. Now, if you really push the power supply cables, you could get away with eight and a quarter inches, but that's just really pushing it. Other than a few RTX 2060s, this interesting RX 5700 from PowerColor and this RX 2070 that I have here from ASUS should fit okay, but higher end GPUs are pretty much off the table. Installation of the GPU can also be a bit difficult since Intel's 90 degree power connector only fits on certain cards. If yours has a more traditional layout like this EVJ one, you'll need to fish out a standard eight pin plug from the wiring harness. Now, once you go through all of that, just pop back the two side panels and the top and installation is done. But if you need access to the third M.2 slot located on the PCB, it's a bit more complicated. You'll need to remove the Wi-Fi antennas, unplug the power and IO connectors, take off the other side panel, and then remove the compute element. Then take off the heatsink, install the SSD, and repeat the process backwards. One of the first things anyone's gonna think of when looking at the NUC9 Extreme Kit is airflow. While it might look like a GPU is preventing air from entering the fan, there are a couple of cutouts in the compute element shroud for intake. Also, there's an open area under the fan for even more air movement, and the air guide should help direct cool air from the case's front rather than the GPU area. But what does that mean for temperatures? Let's check it out. Starting with gaming, temperatures over time remained in their mid 70s until pretty late in the test where they gradually rose to mid 80s. But the odd thing is that they didn't have any effect on frequencies. Those stayed pretty constant at 4.2 gigahertz. Temperatures in Premiere Pro are pretty much the same story, but you'll notice some big dips here. If I overlay the speeds onto that, you'll see that's because the CPU goes into a semi idle state at certain points. Basically in those areas, the GPU and iGPU are taking over video encoding and decoding. Now Autodesk Maya showed some super odd behavior that mirrored what I'd usually expect from a notebook. Temperatures start really high and then fall off a cliff and the frequencies pretty much mirror that. For whatever reason, it looks like the 9980HK is throttling itself here, even though temperatures are pretty low. The Ghost Canyon isn't exactly whisper quiet at full load, but let's just take a listen. All right, so before I get into performance, I do wanna give you a little insight into what I'm comparing the NUC9 to. The model that I have over here comes with the i9-9980HK. When you add 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz memory, a one terabyte SSD, and an ASUS RTX 2070 ITX I talked about before, well, we're talking about 2400 US dollars. Yeah. Mm, that's a lot. Specking out the exact same Intel-based ITX system, but with desktop components comes to much less by about 600 bucks. You could get away with even less if you decide to go with a different ITX case and air cooling. But what happens if your budget is $2,400 and you still want something compact? Well, 
That's where AMD comes in with this monster of an ITX rig that I just built recently. Um, and it costs about the same as the NUC 9, uh, around $2,400, and it's still beautiful. And if you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of space, because the H1 still looks pretty compact, love this design. All right, so on to the results for these three systems. Starting out with Cinebench, and it's pretty obvious that this is a notebook CPU that just can't match what desktop CPUs have to offer. The same goes for Blender, but I do think it's important to mention that a few NUC 9s together could make for an awesome rendering farm uh, in this program. Now we get into something that's a bit closer to my heart, and the benefits of Intel's QuickSync engine really do come in handy uh, in Adobe Premiere Pro. At least in projects that we're rendering on a daily basis, even a $2,400 AMD 3900X based system can keep up with the other two systems. That result is just a one-off though, and in Resolve, the NUC 9 can't keep up, but every other system is pretty close to one another. Moving on to Autodesk Maya, the 9980HK just gets its butt kicked again. But remember, for this test and Cinebench, the CPU throttled itself big time for no reason whatsoever. Moving on to gaming, and the 9980HK oddly doesn't look all that bad compared to the 9900K, but for $2,400 for a whole system, Heck no, it just doesn't offer all that much value, especially when compared to that $2,400 AMD ITX system. The 1% minimums are also a pretty glaring issue in some games like Red Dead Redemption 2. From a performance per watt standpoint, I'm not really convinced here either. I mean, sure, the NUC 9 is efficient when there's a full CPU load, but it also struggles in apps that stress the processor. In gaming, it's pretty much a wash since its power consumption aligns with frame rates. So here's a question that I keep asking about the NUC 9 Extreme. Would I buy it? And the answer to that is a simple no, because this thing, it's not targeted towards the enthusiast DIY market. In fact, this is just a notebook without a display, a keyboard, a trackpad, an operating system, and it runs a previous gen CPU. There are tons of potential here, but my main problem with the NUC 9 Extreme really comes down to price. I mean, sure, it's super compact and surprisingly easy to work with, but this seems designed and priced in the past before the small form factor spaces got so competitive. Nowadays, beginners can go out and buy a pre-built ITX system that'll cost a lot less money than the NUC 9 Extreme. So maybe this thing could be a good fit for businesses who might be looking for a really small, efficient, rendering machine for editing, uh, maybe a little bit of 3D work, uh, or if you're if you're running a gaming cafe, this could be a really good fit too. But for anything else, it's just a hard sell. So on that note, thank you so much for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this little breakdown of the Intel, Intel's NUC 9. Stay safe, spend responsibly, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.